So what is going on guys, this is Ryan here, and before we get started with this video, let me ask you a simple question. You like card games? Now for those of you who said yes, you might want to get your snack ready because this is about to go in, but for those of you who don't, hold up, take a seat, I think you might like them after this. I'm always on the lookout for new, unique horror games, and this game right here called Inscription seeks to do just that. Guys, it is a trading card horror game, how sick does that sound? This game also comes from the developer of Pony Island, which is one I never got to check out, but has had a lot of positive responsive just because of the way the game plays. You know what man, I've spoken enough for this intro, you see that play button right there? It's about time we click it. And clicking it shows us another play button, because this isn't ominous in the slightest, right? Uh, let's go. Okay, Daniel Mullins Games. This is called Inscription as said before, Devolver Digital. All right, I see you, okay. I see you. Time to figure out what's on this thing. Okay, uh, what, VHS style? I have no idea. So he puts the tape in maybe, or something like that? That's a tape running, a VHS tape. Hey, hang on, maybe it's a game though. Inscription, press any button to start. So, already there could be a huge fourth wall breaking feature about this game. You see someone put the tape in and now we're playing? I'm gonna try this game as a one-off and just see what you guys think. I don't know how I play this thing, we're gonna have to learn together, but let's do it. Hold up. Hey fella, I'm just starting this out. How you expect me to play? Wait, continue? Why can I click and drag continue there? That makes no sense. I've not played this game before. Uh, hello? What the frick? I can't look around. Do I need to? Hey, uh, can I see your face? Another challenger. It has been ages. Perhaps you have forgotten how this game is played. Allow me to remind you. All right. Oh, I'm turning my sound up. I like the sound design. Play the squirrel card. So we've got four cards in our hand, various different characters, and a little playing field here. Let's get learning, okay? This guy sounds like he's evil. Look at his eyes. Play the squirrel card. Uh, you're going on the left. Now play your stoats. We press back. Now we play the stoat. You're going right. We can't put him by the side. Stoats cost one blood. Sacrifices must be made. All right. Uh, I'm sorry, bud. An honorable death. Play the stoat. So... Okay, maybe the little symbol in that corner there is how we know. Wolf requires two sacrifices. You don't have enough. Ring the bell to end your turn and commence combat. Okay, let's ring the bell. Your stoat stands unopposed. The number on the bottom left is the attack power one. So I guess we attack for one and we deal a damage. Your stoat dealt me one damage. It added to the scale. You win if you tip my side all the way down. Ah, okay. The freak's wrong with your hand. Okay, so we want to tip the scale. My turn. Okay, you know what you're doing though. Hang on a second, your stoat stands in the way of my frailty. Hey, my coat will out two damage to your stoat. So he's only got one HP left. That means your stoat's health is two less. If a creature's health reaches zero, it dies. So it's your turn again. All right, you may draw from your deck or you may draw a squirrel. So I guess we draw the squirrels as the ultimate like sacrificing thing, how we can summon monsters. So we probably want to draw a squirrel, right? How dull. Hey, watch this play. So we go like that, we go back, and then we take down these two. Look what I got now, I got the wolf, huh? Its suffering was real, but you will see it again. Play the wolf and then, how do we get it to attack though? I don't know if we have to press a button or something like that, or maybe it automatically does it. It does, hey, because you are learning, I will pass. All right, so we get the chance again. Again, the choice, a random card from your deck or the certainty of a squirrel. Let's go random on this one then. So the river snapper, you are lacking sacrifices for that creature. We can't see the card. Uh, we got to skip then, right? We do the attack, two more counters, three damage dealt, three weights on the scale. Oh, three attack. All right, I see that. Pass. What? This dude is so stupid. Uh, I'll take a squirrel, play that guy down. I mean, I don't have to do any more plays, correct? Like, I got enough. I could sacrifice both, but that doesn't make any sense at all. I'll just ring the bell. Like, we're gonna do the work. <laughs> hey, you just lost, fella. That's how we go. You've won this match. They won't all be so easy. Oh, I bet. Look at that, he just clears the board. Let me recall your story. Oh, yes. What the heck is this? You were lost deep in the forest. A single path revealed itself. This is interesting, right? It's like we're playing in the continued mode, even though the new game was there, it was grayed out. We are continuing our adventure, so do we almost have to kind of discover the story of this character before? Making me want to scratch my chin a lot and my nose for some reason. Why is my nose itchy? So, two denizens of the forest approach you tentatively. So we check these out. The caustic adder, damage from its poison bite is always lethal. And this one, the undying cat, sacrificing the poor beast does not kill it. Hey, hold up. 
That's six. So we see these icons in the middle, maybe? Only one may grace your paltry deck. So the undying cat or the adder which does poison. Now, you know, I like my feline. So we're going to go for the cat on this one. Another creature joins your caravan. My, my caravan? Hold up. What? Some of the creatures of the forest seem willing to follow you. I don't know what that means. I guess we'll find out. You came across an abandoned sack. What the freak? You found a squirrel in a bottle. A brick in case of an emergency. All right. Uh, you have a second. Yes. And a third. Another useful implement. I'll allow you to tip the scales with it. Wait, this is so interesting. Three is as much as you can carry. So we take those, and then I guess the skull icons are when we fight people. It's kind of got this, like, role-playing aspect to it. Okay, let's move through a little bit more. It's showtime then, correct? You were ambushed while crossing some rough terrain. It literally is like D&D. &D. This is kind of interesting. So two stumps and a boulder in our path. We take our cards. <laughs> You sacrificed me while I was sleeping. It was the right play. I get it. Maybe you'll help me. Take your turn. Yo, why are you talking to me? You should not be sent here. Play along for now. Wait, what do you mean? You may now see my moves ahead of time. Okay, so we have the squirrel. We can see our cards if we go like that. Squirrel, play along for now, river snapper, and the cat. Well, I can sacrifice for the stoke, but you do have a squirrel. So if we play that, place him down. Look, wait, hold on. Can I withdraw that? I can't. Let's just see what happens, though. So if I sacrifice that right there, then the stoke gets played. Here we go. Let me ring the bell a second. So we attack the stump. The wolf cub moves up and it attacks. Mind the ambitious wolf cub. It ages swiftly. So it will age, I assume, it into a wolf then. I guess that icon in the middle is how we know. If I click on this icon, oh, you can see the rules. So a card bearer in this sigil will grow into a more powerful form after one turn on the board. So we want to try and take that thing down as quick as we can. Uh, we have the cat, so we'll take a new one. Now we have a wolf. That's good. So I could play the cat. Wait, the cat requires a sacrifice though? I don't think I want to do that. Like, I kind of, you know, I'm going to just go next on my turn. We're going to try and get used to this, guys, you know? An airborne bat flies over creatures to attack directly. Oh, okay. So two weights in the scale. Yeah, this is where it can start getting overwhelming. So let's try and take down the bat first of all. We'll put the squirrel there, and I might switch it into the wolf. Maybe that will do it. It needs two sacrifices, though. Let's test it with the cat, then. I don't know so much if this will be a good thing. Uh, maybe that will be good for my turn. Let's try this thing out. So that attacks there. Okay. Dang. So the cat couldn't do any damage. Ha! My bat flew right over your cat. Let me take a squirrel one second here. So what about if I play the squirrel? Now, I'm thinking, should I take it down with the wolf? Like, maybe use those two as a sacrifice, play that. Maybe... Oh, wait, no, the cat. It stays on the board because, of course, you can still play it. Let me check my hand. I got the river snapper, so it could be high defense, but do I want to sacrifice it right now? Let me just attack, okay? So we take down his wolf. That does one damage. Oh, the tip. Lost. Yeah, I know. Using this as a learning opportunity may be the only way to mitigate my disappointment. Get up. Get up from the table. Hey, hold up a second. Fetch me the candlestick from atop the barrel beside the door. Okay, sir. Uh, no, this is kind of creepy, though. I like this. So we can move around like so. I, I don't think I want to stand that close. This has, like, a key inside of it. So we're in this dude's, like, cavern or something. You can see... Hold on. Outside. Let me go to the door. You see... What is that? It's like something outside. It's like breaking the game. I thought it might have been lightning, but that don't sound like lightning. Okay, so we could take this. We can't. Oh, yo, as we progress, then I guess we unlock new things. So there's also this here. There's a hand holding his shot. I ain't messing with that. All right, so he wanted the candle. Let me go ahead and get this. Uh, Please, may I get the candle? Thank you. There you go. Okay, we take this then. Bring it here. Okay, we're doing that. We're doing that. So it feels like as we get things done, okay, we place it on the table. Now sit back down. Let me explain something to you. Okay, we've got candles. Hey, you're blowing the candles out. That was one of the two mistakes you can make here. If you make another, I must sacrifice you. Now, where were we? Hey, fella, what do you mean sacrifice me? Though? Hold up. Let me go on ahead. This is really interesting. So we have the two cards again, the Meek Sparrow, an inexpensive yet feeble flying creature. Maybe we could have then the same ability that he had before. The Young Wolf Cub. It grows into a wolf after a single turn. This is actually quite a powerful card. The Sparrow, though, is pretty interesting. I think I'm going to take it. I want to see how we can play with this. So there's a new icon here. Let's move on that square. It might be a battle. You stumbled upon some strange stones in the mist. Okay. You were compelled to choose a worthy sacrifice. One that will be lost forever. All right. So it could be the cat or the sparrow. Uh, I don't know. Uh, the cat's kind of sick though, but I want to see what this does. Pick me. You looked upon the menagerie and selected a healthy host. So... Why do you want to be selected, though? Okay, we'll pick him, and then we sacrifice. We'll do what you want. What an honor. Dang, okay. 
Okay, a ghastly spectacle, but the soul of a cat now lives in the stoat. All right, so we take it back. You see his eyes normalize right there. Uh, this one looks like a skull with some kind of forest nearby. Okay, it's another game. What is this? Behold my total. It inscribes my canine cards with the airborne sigil. We have so much to learn, but we'll get there. He's completely insane. You see that, right? No care for the rules. Enough! So the stoat is talking. Only keeps me around to watch me suffer. Yo, what the frick? This game is getting dark kind of fast though. Let me see the board. So he's got the bat and the coyote. What is this symbol there? A card bearing the sigil will strike an opponent directly, even if there's a creature opposing it. Uh, let's see what this one is here then. A card bearing the sigil. So the same one again. All right. So, I mean, I got the squirrel to play. Uh, always good to play those first of all, right? And we could sacrifice it straight away. I don't know what for. Need to remind you, your items may help. You are right. You know, maybe we should take that so we can play a second squirrel and we can get the sacrifice immediately on the go here. Pull out the wolf, man. I'm gonna go for the stout in the next one, or the stout. I can't remember how you pronounce that. So we have the wolf. Let's try and end our turn. A heavy attack. A very heavy attack. And now the bat comes up. My totem has grunted my Cody the power of flight. Yo. They're doing the damage. I don't know. How do I take down the airborne characters then? Hold on. Let me try something here. So take the squirrel. If I place that there, I don't know if this is how it works. Um, if I sacrifice for the sparrow, will the sparrow fight the coyote because it's an airborne creature? I almost want to do my turn just to see what happens. So let's go. Nope. It can't. It goes straight through it. So I don't know how we actually attack the coyote. I need to try and figure this. Hold up. There's a book here. The Mighty Leap. A card bearing this digital block an opposing creature bearing. That's how we know then, okay? All right, book. I hear you smashing off the table, so maybe I should take the risk? I don't know if it's worth it. Let's see what we get. It's another wolf. I feel like I probably should have went for one of the squirrels. Let's end my turn a second. So, we'll attack back. You're three damage away from winning. Yeah, I know, but you're also about to inflict a lot of pain on me. My goodness, this is uh, this racking up kind of quick though. When a card bearing this sigil is sacrificed, it does not perish. So that's kind of unique for the stoat. I see that. Uh, I might go for a squirrel in that case. Maybe I should play the squirrel here. It's airborne again though. Okay, I'll blood sacrifice those two to play the second wolf. I do like those. Let's end my turn. So the wolf could take down the wolf. I need to try and understand this a little bit more. Still a bit confusing for me. We'll take my final card in my deck, the River Snapper. So it's all down to just really what we can do here. All right, let me end my turn a second. So two attacks. I mean, that hurt the guy, so ultimately we still got the win. Hey, let's go. Impressive. You may yet survive this ordeal. Knock on wood. Okay, now, before I go ahead and go any further, I can back out here. Now, I've got these pliers on the table. You can't use that right now, but maybe we can in the future. All right, let's keep moving down this little playing board. So we got a question mark one. Oh, would you look at this? A proud wolf, a vicious contender. It's a choice of three different cards. The elk, it moves after attacking. That's interesting. Or the monstrous grizzly. Its form speaks enough of its efficiency. Now, we got to be strategic when we build our deck up over time. So the elk moves in certain directions as we play it. You can see at the end of the owner's turn, a card bearing this sigil will move in the direction inscribed in the sigil. That could probably be more useful than the grizzly because look at the sacrifices we need for him. I'm more interested in being able to move up the board and get out of the way of this guy's stuff quicker. We have two wolves, so I will play the elk on this occasion. Let's see where this takes us so we could go the route of the bonfire or the route of a different totem, which might result in another battle. Let's check out what the flame is all about, you know? Let's see what can we do here. Here we go. You came across a small group of survivors. Faces shrunken from starvation, they huddled around a campfire. They looked upon your group of creatures and beckoned. Come, warm one of your creatures by the fire, one said. Hold up, now this doesn't sound good. Warm it by the fire, that will enhance its power, said another. You notice one of the survivors wiping drool from its mouth. I know what, they're trying to take one of my characters away. I can't back out? Hmm, yeah, I'm just as suspect as him right now. I don't want to sacrifice these guys, but I have to? There's nothing else I can do here. Hold up, hold up. Do I want to sacrifice him though? I don't know. Yeah, look, he's saying no way. I need to find a way. I don't think I can back out of this though. Like there's nothing else I can really do to not go ahead with this one. This was the gamble we took and this is the result we're in. Uh, I'm gonna go with my original plan. I know what this meant. The fire warmed the poor sparrow, enhancing its power. One of the survivors reached toward it. Another gnashed their teeth. Without a word, you pulled the sparrow away from the fire and left. Ooh, so we did get the upgrade on that one. We didn't have to fight. This is going to be another battle, though. Let's go. We have to do this. This is how it goes down. So, how's the playing field going to be? There's something on the board right there. There's a way out for both of us. It's somewhere in this foul cabin. Be silent or I will tear you to shreds. There's something about this cabin, then. 
what the freak? This is interesting. It's like there's a world within a world. And this guy is somehow helping us. I don't know how he's doing it. Okay, so let me check the board. Dang, he starts with a grizzly, the grand fur. This on our side, so a card bearing this sigil will block an opposing creature bearing an airborne sigil. That's good. A lot of these require sacrifices, so we should start, I think, over here. Wait, you cannot draw a card from your first turn? Who are you kidding? We'll play the squirrel, and then I think what I'm gonna do is immediately sacrifice it for the stoke, get him on the board, back on the board. This guy will not die if we use him as a sacrifice, correct? So he can stay on the board and help fight. So we end our turn here. Let's go. We did a bit of damage. Oh my... Can we, can we retry that? Dang, the grizzly is gonna inflict so much damage. I gotta play the squirrel there because he's just gonna take it down, right? Yo, there's like nothing I can do already. I can't do a sacrifice. Maybe I should play the other squirrel. Uh, hold up a second, because he's gonna take down my wolf instantly, but maybe I should try and damage this guy immediately. It's about taking him down, right? This might be a bad play. Maybe we'll regret this, who knows? Let's play it there. Uh, I'll end my turn, let me just see. We did some damage, but it just takes it down so quickly. And I'm already pretty much out of options. I shouldn't be playing that there. You know, I got a lot to learn. I will be saying that. Okay, we put the squirrel right there. There's nothing else we can do with the turns. So we play that. And he's going to hit again big time. We're one hit away from death, man. Hold up, hold up. So we're going to play the squirrel there. Now, we're going to have to blood sacrifice. It's the only thing we can do. And we should be able to take it. We got it. We got it. We got it. This is how we do it. Woo! That's looking good, man. That's looking good. So nothing in the hand. Start with the squirrel. We'll play the squirrel down. So is he done? Like, he's playing nothing more. The scales are tipping in my favor. This is what I like to see. Go for a second squirrel. We'll play that guy down again. Easy. Easy. Look at that. He can't even fight back. He's all out of cards. So now we'll draw this one. It is the river snapper. Don't even need to play it. Just let the wolf take care of this. And that's how we take the win on that one. So kind of simple. We just had to find a way to take him down. But I guess the situations we're going to be put in will need more and more thought behind them. So now comes the question. Do we go the route of the campfire where we might find some strange people? Or do we try and see what's in the bag? Because I think I might do that. Okay, we come up to this question mark. One, three cards in front. A reviled skunk. It stench reduces the strength of an enemy. Hey, Matt, I'm kind of glad that you smell like that, though. The conniving raven, a blight upon the skies. So we've got an airborne creature and the bullfrog. A watch for bullfrog it leaps into the sky so this will be our first card in the deck that can actually inflict damage to airborne creatures we don't have any of that before so i almost feel like maybe we should try and prioritize that but the raven is really good and the skunk i'm actually gonna take the skunk i like the idea of reducing power of nearby characters if we put him like in between two then we should be good so let's go upon the rucksack what we got down here huh? oh if you deem it necessary you may cut one of my cards what what the? A gust from this mate lift your creatures from the air, if only for a turn. So we actually have an airborne attack and we have the pliers there. What the heck? This is so interesting. Hmm, I'm kind of feeling like lifting the characters in the air. Take down the airborne ones, you know. I think that might be a good one. Wait, why am I seeing this? I don't I don't need this. Choose, choose that, I guess. I don't know what's going down. So feeling overburdened with enough of full three items, you carry on. So then we come across what might be a boss stage or something like that. Okay, let's go. So with the... What the? The trees seemed to close in around you as a chill mist descended. In the distance, you could hear the clinking of metal on stone. A hobbled figure stood in your path. What the? <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Twats the Prospector! So it's like, yo, this is cool. He's doing the Prospector again. Easy, boss. The mule is key. Hey, he's helping. This is so interesting. What the freak, man? Like, I want to know what these do then. To the user, you will place a weight on the scales if the pain is temporary. I didn't know that's how these go down, so maybe we should start this one out with a squirrel. He's got the carlty and the pack mule. Now, the pack mule, it doesn't do any damage, but it's going to be moving sideways to defend a lot. All right, let's go with squirrel. We'll place him in the center right there. Let's ding our turn. Let's go. So the pack mule moves up. He's got the wolf cub. Well, dang, how about that? You see that? My goodness, no time in between. So let's go with the squirrel. We're going to have to try and take down the coyote. And I think I might. I can't even sacrifice it enough. I mean, we can sacrifice here for the stoke game on the board. This spot, are you sure? I'm really not. I ain't going to lie. Me and my turn a second. So we hit that. There you go. All right, wolf cup comes up. One damage to the boulder. You see how the mule, though, it blocks our path always. That's very interesting. We have to be wary of that. We have the river snapper and we have the wolf. So I could, in fact, take this guy here. I will play the squirrel there. Now, I will try and sacrifice these two. If I'm correct, you can sacrifice a card with the sigil and it will not perish. Let's see how true that stands with the wolf, those two. Look at that. So the stoke is actually a very powerful card. With the wolf there, then, let's uh, see what damage we do. Play this turn. So we attack that. We move over. And the mule is going to move into its path. The coyote comes up. 
What the? Okay. My brain aches. This is still a really confusing game. Okay, I'm gonna play the squirrel in this corner here. There's nothing else I can really do. I could use these cards or I guess the scissors to cut one of them. But I don't want to do that, you know? We just see. So, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, the scales are coming back. Oh, all right, all right. Let's try and think, how do we do this then? Let me put one of these up so the elk. At the end of the owner's turn, a card bearing the scissor will move in the direction inscribed so we can do the blood sacrifice with these two here. Now, where do we place it on the board? That's the important question. I think putting it here might be the best idea. It can attack those two, move to the side and defend against the wolf. Let's see, does this go down like this? Yeah, man, there you go, there you go. All right. He's hitting the elk a lot. The scales are really starting to weigh not in my favor. For this one, I might just take the squirrel, I think. I'm starting to feel like maybe getting the uh, the rip. I just realized he's got a wolf on the board too. I'm kind of out. Uh, I'll play the squirrel there a sec. Like, I, I don't... I mean, I could sacrifice to try and keep it alive. The elk will die, but it, it will also kill the wolf. So there's no point sacrificing that just yet. Let's play my turn. Okay, so we get that wolf down. The scale tips one, and then we move to the side. Dude, this is crazy difficult. Okay, now the wolf hits for three. Therefore, I will play the squirrel. Now, we'll sacrifice these two and put the river snapper right there. He can hit back two, but that's not what the main focus is for this play here. Okay, we move there. Okay, that loses my elk. So, we at least got defense on that corner for a little bit. I'll take a squirrel card. I'll just end my turn for this one. There's not much more I can do here. Dang, the ball just built up a lot. Look at that. My gosh, you can hear the clank in it. It's making me like kind of anxious though. Take another card. So that gives us the skunk. Ooh, hold up. That could be good, right? If we play this guy here, we'll play the squirrel. Now, this only needs one blood sacrifice. So I, I don't even need to use the squirrel. Sacrifice the stone and play this guy here. So now our board is kind of full. That looks good. Let's see what that does then. So those two. Okay. Now, the skunk gets hit, but his power is reduced now to only two. It's just seeing what can we play with that. We've got the sparrow. We've got the sparrow. Now, the issue this time is that because our board is full, we can't actually use this on the stone. So we'll sacrifice the squirrel and place him there. Let's see what this does for now. We're going to get some attacks in. That's good. Ooh, quite a lot. He takes out the skunk, and then that moves across. So let me try this a second. Our last card is a wolf. We would need two sacrifices for him. So the best plan I can really see here is to honestly go ahead and take down the wolf. We'll use the stoat and maybe sacrifice the sparrow. Though we could get rid of the river snapper because he does only one damage and the pack mule doesn't really do much. I feel like it'll be better to get something in line with that. So let's go these two, play him right there. Let's see what this does, huh? That should be good. Woo! Okay, there's one of those gone. I hope you didn't think it would be that easy. Wait, what do you mean? That's gold in them cards. Wait, hey, what the heck, man? He's going... Wow. He's struck gold. Yo, what the freak? I literally have... How can... I can't do anything. I have squirrels, man. What the... All I can do is go back now. Yo. Get him. So, there's nothing I can do other than play squirrels. I Did I mess this one up? I didn't see this coming right now. Your supply of new creatures was exhausted. Starvation began to set in. What can I do? There's nothing I can do other than just change my turn. I don't want to use my abilities yet. But that's a GG, man. I didn't see that coming. Not now. Draw a card first. But I can't, though. I have no cards in my hand. I don't get what I can do. Okay, uh, I think I'm going to get GG'd. I really don't understand what just happened right here. Uh... <laughs> So there goes my second candle. Ah, uh, more gold for me, blood artist. Ugh! So he... Did you just take my soul, fella? Wait, what the freak? What is this? What, he's dragging us into the back room, I think, or something. I don't know. I can't look around, I can't move. You aren't dead yet. This isn't purgatory, though you may think of it that way. Before you expire, I must ask you a favor. I would like a memento. What is this? Your very own death card. It's quite plain at the moment, isn't it? We will work together to amend that. I want this to be the perfect memento of you. Here are some cards from your mediocre deck. We can put them to good use. Please choose a card to draw the cost from. I like but I mean, I'll go the wolf because I got two. A cost of two blood from the wolf. Okay, and another. This time I will use its power and health, the numbers. Kind of want to use the wolf again, though. Like, let's go. Okay, we use the wolf, so three of two. Now choose a card from which we will extract the sigils. Is it airborne or can it move sideways? Yeah, let's go sparrow. A sigil of airborne from the sparrow. So we got an airborne creature, two blood summoning. I never did ask for your name. I put my name in. Hold up. I literally have to put my name in. Dude, that's my name right there. There is now one final matter. The portrait. Uh... Hey, man, are you ready? Nah, I'm ready, don't. You do not need to smile. He's gonna take. And I just got immortalized on a card. 
Wait, hold up, man. Is that the GG for myself, then? Here we go again. Another challenger. Perhaps it is time. Perhaps you can understand bones. Wait, what do you mean? A resourceful opossum costs two bones. You gain a bone when one of your creatures perishes for any reason. Th yeah, this is confusing, man. There's so much information here. All right, let's get back at it again. So place the squirrel on the board. There's already much more we can do, you know? You are lacking the bones for that creature. Yeah, I know. Okay, so I'll play my turn and see what he does. So the rattler comes up. It's gonna hit the three. Like, I'm about to just die again. Look, like, I don't have any other cards in my hand with the powerful ones. It's just nothing but summoning stuff. Here's how we play this then. So sacrifice the squirrel, get that guy on the board. From the death of your creature, you've gained a bone. You will not lose this until it is spent or the battle ends. So it's it's locked to the battle. That's how we play the opossum as we lose our character. So get rid of his rouse snake. He puts another one on the board. They're like super high damage. Okay, so we'll play a second squirrel right there. And we'll just leave this to do its turn. Now, if the rouse snake moves forward, it's going to kill me instantly. So I've got a second bone now. So I can use these to play it. So we'll draw the squirrel. And then we get to play the opossum, which we can put there. The two bones are up. It's going to take that down. I guess that's all we got for now. And then we'll pick up the other squirrel and get this on the board. It's time we sacrifice, I think, for the wolf. Sacrifice those two and we'll place that down. And it gives us more of the bone cards, so we could play those cards more often. But I think this should be decent. Like, he's not really playing any other things on the board, so we can just ding the ball again and get this going. There you go. We'll take care of that. So that's the scale tipped in our favor on that one. How brutal of you. You dealt me more damage than you needed to win. However, in my case, such fates are rewarded. To be precise, a tooth to keep for each extra damage dealt. The trapper may be interested in your spoils. The freak, what are you talking about? Teeth, man. Oh. I forgot your figurine. Yeah, you did. Get up and fetch it for me. So, it feels almost like the death was mandatory. It's beside the safe. We saw that over here. Uh, there's our figurine. So, we go back and we keep playing, I guess. Wait, hold on, hold on. You hear the knocking? Let us continue. Um, where's the knocking coming from? I can hear that. Is it... It's inside the chest here. So there's some kind of code that we can figure to open that. Uh, whether we find that around here or not, I have no idea. There's a secondary board here. Okay, so I don't know if I've gone back to the start or if we're replaying from a different character. Uh, I guess that's what we got to learn. So Amiga Coyote, what did you expect? Four bones to play that one. Six for this one. The Nefarious Rattler, a brutal creature. Once past its monstrous fangs. Okay, that's a lot more damage, but weaken the HP. So they've all got low HP. The Unlikable Cockroach, it returns to your hand after dying. So so that's actually kind of decent, even though its attack is very low. The fact that we can have this card that we can constantly use, that might be helpful. Yeah, let's try the cockroach. If it goes bad, we just don't use it much more. So, oh, I skipped that. All right, we're, we're gonna just go ahead and pretend that we heard what the guy said. So we come up to a rucksack. We got the three items. Now, we didn't use these at all last time, which makes me think that I should probably focus on doing that a bit more to help us. So let's enter the next battle. Let's see if something here might help us. Are you smart or something? He usually doesn't even bother teaching about bones. All right, here's a tip. I saw it past victim writing a passcode. Wait, hold up. In the rule book? Hey, hang on a moment. So we've just been told some secrets in the rule book, which is over here. 273. That's the code for the locker over there. Hey, thank you so much, Stout. I appreciate that. Okay, so two coyotes. We have the stump in front of us. So I think I'll play the squirrel here just to keep it safe for now. Get it on the board. Uh, we don't, I think, want to draw a card either. So we'll just end our turn on this one. So they're going to move up both. Four damage. Look straight out of the bat. This this is insane. Like how we can try and take this down because I'm already done. Like there's nothing I can really do here. Okay, I'm gonna draw one of these cards so we get the bullfrog. I'm gonna use the squirrel also. I need that for my hand. Really, really, really importantly. So we have two on the board now, but we need to try and take down both of these somehow. Coyotes have one HP each, so we can sacrifice that for the stoat right there. He's on the board. He says okay. Now we only have one bone, so we can't use that one. But the bullfrog could be another sacrifice here, right? And then we play that. So we should be able to take both of those down. And we could play the opossum for the for the bones on the side. Okay, maybe I'm getting this down. You see, we took them both down. Um, I think what might be better in this occasion is to maybe draw another squirrel for this turn. There's not really many plays we can do. So we'll just let them do their thing, all right? The scales are starting to tip much more in our favor. Take our last card, which is a wolf. Uh, we'll let the squad just roll out, you know? I don't trust it now that we have that second phase thing. We need to be very wary if we know it's like a candle. I see the way this is going. I can see... You may accept my surrender, or you may finish this match the slow way. Should we accept it? He's given us an item. We should do it, right? He knew he was gonna win. If you desire it, you may stand now. It'll allow me time to plan. Wait, plan what though? I stand up. I am no tyrant. You may stand whenever the map is enrolled. It allows me to spend time to plan your next encounter. But do keep your hands off my possessions. I assume he's talking about the things around here. I don't know. So 
So the code in here was 273, right? Let's try it. 27, and we end this with the three. Hey, that's good. A stink bug? He's also conscious. Oh, hello. I wasn't sure if I would ever escape. That iron crypt is... Is the stone around? The stunted wolf? This madness must end. Put that away. What the heck? Hold up. Is P? He was talking about someone right here. Kind of want to ask, but I won't. Okay, so we have a key. And it slots in this right here. Let's turn the handle and open this. What is hidden behind there? Oh, okay. Nah, this, nah, my brain does not understand this. So we have a scale and we have some kind of bell system we can ding. Let me try the other side here. So these can be moved. And as we ding these, what is that in turn doing exactly? Look, there's a three there. I move these guys up. Let's see what that does. It's some kind of numerical thing. I don't know how we're achieving this or why it's going. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm going to be honest. Maybe we want the numbers to be higher. We want like a five or something. So bring that, bring that one down. Uh, what does that do? That's a four. That's a five. We just lined them up. We get the skink as a result. I forgot I had put that there. Very well, you may add it to your deck and I'll deal you one every so often. So by unlocking these things, I guess we get different unique abilities like that. And this one might be a lot more difficult than to figure. All right, I'm gonna back out a second now. That part I don't really understand. Um, there's so many more objects around this cabin though. This is sealed away. Look at him just keeping his eyes on us though at all times watching. Maybe some kind of puzzle with the clock. And also like, why are the sparks coming from outside? That's the most important question. It feels like almost we're trying to get out the door to win this. Okay, let's do a little bit more. Let me move up on this square so we get the choice of a card. Okay, the Bountiful Warren. It spawns a rabbit when it is played. Okay, what that does, I have no idea. The Nascent Fawn, it quickly grows into an elk, so that's good. There's one of those monsters like the cub. Hold up a second. So... Did I actually get killed in the last universe? I mean, you know I'm gonna play myself. I'm gonna get my own card, so we come upon a rucksack. Is this another item, I guess? So the rock may get you out of a hard place. Hey, I see what you're doing there. I am actually gonna take that one. There's a lot of defense, and that's what I always need. Let's go to battle. Let's see what you got planned for us. Let's see how this goes down. Wait, you again? Indeed! Our friend freed me! Well, I basically told them how to do it. Ian Lyon, you got a plan? We have another friend here. You've got to be... I wouldn't call him a friend. It begins with P, but I suppose we are in deep this time. What? This is really interesting. So, the cards are conscious. These two are, like, specifically awake. Why, though? It's like fourth wall breaking. Okay, so he has a wolf cub on the board. Uh, that tells me I should probably try and focus on getting rid of him as soon as I can. Uh, if I played that there, let me just think right now. We'll play the stove. Just pop that guy right there. There you go. Total misplay. I don't- yeah, I know. I don't really know exactly what I'm doing, to be honest. Like, I'm trying to defend. Maybe I've got this whole idea. Yeah, I think I've got this down wrong in my head. Like, the way I'm trying to play this game, I don't think it's quite working how it should be. I need to be much more strategic with the way I go about things, because now, once I take down the wolf cub, the alpha is just going to come up. It's going to attack my stove again. Let me try and do that, and then he comes up, and he does his attack. Hold up, so stop that. He's got one HP. It feels better to sacrifice him, then. So let me draw another card. We have the wolf. Um, all right, dude, I'm sorry about this. I'm going to play this one and play this one there. I had no I had to do the sacrifice, man. You're about to get taken care of. So I'll play him here because he can take down the alpha. I'll put the sting bug also on the board over this side. We see why he says that. Back in the game. Yep, you're up. So we take that down. The alpha ain't quite dead. Wait. I think I just got a GG. I don't know if it's... <laughs> not sure what happened, but happy about what just went down. Okay, guys, uh, I'm actually going to leave this first video here because I'm going to end up playing this game for hours. I can tell it's that type of game where I just get super engrossed. We'll see what you guys think, though. This might end up becoming, like, some kind of subset of a series because this is interesting. I like what's happening here. And this weird fourth wall stuff all around. Like, we put in the VHS, now we're in this world. This don't look like outside. This looks electrical. We have the cards as well that we own physically talking to us about some kind of strat. Someone has trapped us here. Probably this guy doing the plays and stuff. But how? That is the question on what is this all adding up to? Maybe we'll find out if you guys want to see another one. I just wanted to see what this game was all about. This was Inscription though. A really cool little game. Still definitely trying to get the hang of how we can play these cards correctly, but I think we'll get there in time. For this one though, guys, this is where we're going to leave this one here, and I really hope you did enjoy. This was a lot of fun. If you did, why not drop me that like rating? And hey, if you're new around here, why not subscribe for more videos just like this one right here? So, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Of course, I hope you did enjoy, and I will, of course, see you on the next one.